welcome back to HBO Girls Rewatch. Rewatch. I'm Amelia. And I'm Evan. And before we jump into today's episode, we just want to remind you to rate and review our podcast on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. And if you're up to it, follow us on TikTok and Instagram at HBO Girls Rewatch. And if you care about us even a little tiny bit, subscribe to our YouTube page. My little sister is beating us in number of subscribers right now, and that's humiliating. Hey, I think it's time to lean into Lena now. Let's get into that episode. Welcome back to HBO Girls Rewatch. I'm Amelia. And I'm Evan. And today we're covering season two, two episode, episode nine, nine on, on all fours. fours. Yeah, this is kind of a famous episode where Marnie does choose to rap at Charlie's work event. No, this is meme-tastic. It's- this is what we talk about when we talk about meme. No, exactly. I don't I think if you don't even know this show, you know this cultural moment. Yeah. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. <laughs> I didn't know it was going to come this quick. I feel like this entire season two, everything that's happened, I thought happened in season three, four, five, and six, but it all happened in this season. Yeah, for me, I did know because I actually know the what's happening chronologically in the show very well. Chronologically, yeah. Chronologically. Yeah. So I actually knew this was coming up because um, I've seen the show five times. Totally, yeah. Um, But... I am. It is always so shocking because, you know, there's so many punchable moments in the first two seasons. There really is. I'm like, what happens next? I can't wait to find out (laughs) as we dive into season three. I'm kind of honoring Marnie. If you can see the video version, Um, I'm honoring Marnie's mental decay by wearing wearing really low pigtails. We said last episode, when a girl does this, you know things are going bad. And I wanted to replicate her look. So that's what's going on with me. I would even say the pigtails seem to be a bit lower. Even just lower? To, just to really go the full I'm really Marnie. really loosening it. Yeah, yeah. really. That's a full Marnie. She's you not doing Marnie. well. Yeah. We, went, we went upstate to find ourselves this weekend. And guess right. what? It did not work on me. It worked for me somewhat. And I think it's such a classic. In this show especially, like we're always seeing them run to different locations to try to find themselves. Yeah. And never working out. Like Shoshana to Japan and Hannah to Iowa and then Jessa to rehab and Marnie, God knows where. If you can count the North Fork as a place to run away to with friends, I guess. Literally. No, literally. literally. But I think what happened is like you went, we went to the Catskills and slept in an overnight campground in a car. We'll get to that in a second. But (laughs) it's like me and Evan were both like, let's get away from this damn city this weekend. Amelia's doing a strip tease. Her (laughs) top keeps falling off. Oh my God, I'm so small. My shirt just falls off of me. (laughs) I don't know how it happens. But we were like, okay, well, we have to get away from this city. But Evan wasn't like, I'm going to have a spiritual shift that will fundamentally change me forever. Amelia did. But I did have that expectation. And as we know, Aristotle said expectations the root of all heartache i quoted that on or i pinned that on pinterest in high school i remember that quickly after leaving the church yeah and i i feel like going upstate i've been so many times before so i know what to expect and what you're going to expect there it's like kind of a everything is again dive themed it's very brooklyn coda where everything's dive themed but not dive pricing totally. it's like everything is so like country core so cute and then they charge you up the wazoo. You think you're gonna spend two dollars upstate because you're out of the city, you know? Like Not milk, the case. milk and eggs cost but twenty five yeah, cents. You're, you're around the farmer, and that's yeah. <laughs> you're, you're right next to the farmer, so it's like the distribution cost yeah, is just you basically think it's gone. Trader Joe's. You think you're cutting out the middleman? Yeah, but that's not the case. Um, I think we had a good <laughs> it's time. So sad. I will Our backs s- are hunched over. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I need to work on my posture. It's so hard. Um, I did. Okay, so when you're a girl, you're all always like afraid to do something but then one day you're not afraid anymore do you know what i mean by that no i need to explain i'm gonna i'm like i'm gonna actually give you a space right now to go on a little <laughs> tangent <laughs> so basically evan day of uh, booked the last campground available at north south lake that north, sounds fake that's already made up. ai literally created the ai created the website anyways we pull it up wasn't after, that good. after having a fun time in the ca- town of kingston <gasps> we pull okay up- we need to describe kingston i'm gonna do it in like four words it's like lesbian mecca four breweries unpack that Oh my god, wait. It's that, kind of perfect to that, me, that, that just made me jaw drop. No, it's, it's, That just made me jaw drop. All, you walk around, everything's either a brewery or lesbian owned or a lesbian brewery, which is like, it's a find a little haven like that in upstate New York, two hours from the city. It's like, thank God the butchers found a space. No, literally. It was so many lesbians and already lesbians. It's beautiful. I, I'm like thinking of moving there. Yeah, not cut, really. Cut but your maybe. hair and go get a. It was a, it was a town for pixie cuts, which I think it's important to have those. 
Um, by the way, a guest is on their way and they are arriving. And I'm sorry this episode is coming out late, but it's literally still going to come out on today. We're recording live today, Tuesday at 1 p.m. And I swear to God, I'm going to edit Amelia's and publish so it in one second. I'm going to double it two times speed. Anyways, we book the campground. We show up. We didn't read the fine print. We show up at 11 p.m. We pull up to the little hut. <laughs> this guy who just started his job there is like, hey, we're like, hey, we're here to no, check it's, in. It's, he's weak, too. He's so committed to this job because it's like he there's not like a, I don't think a lot of opportunity in this town so he's kind of like got himself like kind of a cushy job for the u.s government right now or new york state How government cushy is it he's probably making 17 dollars an hour and having to work until yeah, 12 but, you know, 30 working for the u.s government's like you never have to do more than 40 hours a week and uh, okay, it's okay. like there's kind of good benefits like this is not a bad job sag wants what steward. he has yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um <laughs> well <laughs> <gasps> so we pull up and he's like it, you missed checking it it ended at nine and i was like so we're not allowed in the park no to i'm laughing my ass off because amelia's in a driver's seat it's my parents car i'm like okay i'm like okay this girl is literally saint.com because i'm letting her take the ip address and run with it an ip address being my parents volvo xc90 and the authority to talk to a new york city state official uh, he, he basically was like, we can't let you in. And I was like, so theoretically, <laughs> if I were to put my foot on this gas pedal and go. And verbatim, actually. I say said these that words. word for word. Would the police chase me? And he was like, yes. And I was like, okay, what about if there's a certain time later tonight and I did the same thing, would the police chase me? And he said, let's just say the police go to bed at 1230. No, literally saw this man turn into a police officer to a guy's girl so quick when yeah. we brought up, like, we threw him a lifeline and he kind of, like, gave it back to us. He yeah, became a guy's girl. I was girl. like, hey, 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 like, I know you really want to do your job and I really respect that, but I'd love no, to not literally. sleep in a Walmart parking lot he tonight. He was an RA and then he became a, a guy's girl. Yeah. I like that would be the perfect it's, description of what's happening. It's when happening. your RA like gets real with you yeah. and it's like, it's okay to fail. It's okay to not get this <laughs> I mean, credit. I was an RA, so I you can't RA. tell. <laughs> when I had to do a wellness check on somebody when I was in my deepest depression and the person was depressed and I had to be like, don't kill yourself, but I get you. One time this uh, RA made a whole board of pictures of themselves when I visited my friends in college at Tulane when I later transferred there, but my first time ever visiting. I like stole, I was drunk. I was like, oh my God, I can be drunk on a weekday. So I like stole three pictures off this bulletin board. <laughs> and she texted everyone that lives on her floor, who stole the photos of me? That is fucking twisted and sick to take photos of me off of Baltimore. It's like, first, why are you making an homage to yourself? A memorial almost to yourself. It's as kind an of RA. like when you stole our poster here and then oh. ended up in the Slack group chat. <laughs> and they found a screen grab of our TikTok and they were like, hey, Slack team, great job marketing. These people were so in love with the poster that they made it part of their podcast <laughs> set. And to that we say Spotify, if you want to pay us more money Wait, than you currently are, that we be sick. actually have an event kind of being sponsored by Spotify on Friday at our apartment because um someone's throwing a, a party on our roof and then it's all donation based and every single dollar that's donated Spotify is matching. And we find out that a girl is one of our past podcast guests, older sisters, no. <laughs> boyfriends, ex-girlfriend. So it's been a huge week here at our house. Um, really quick yeah, before I guess the rise and we jump into shout. leaning into Lena. We want to shout out Shoshana, the librarian. Literally the cutest note we've ever received. Thank you for spending $3.59 to send the a they're, copy they're of a librarian. Tiny they furniture. sent us the tiny furniture tiny. dvd <laughs> you're about to say tiny desk <laughs> <laughs> yeah they sent us the tiny desk concert of lena dunham and once we find out where our dvd player is in this town we're gonna extrapolate no, it and absolutely. tiktok that once shit once we can find one dvd player in all of the county kings county brooklyn we're gonna literally abuse and abuse the two cds of this so game so thank you to this fan shoshana we live laugh love you you are a girl's girl girl what girl are you a giver girl yeah, and it's also so cool to have somebody who watches the podcast with the name Shoshana. Good, 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 good. Jealous. So many G's right there. Um, but we're going to be right back. Our guest is ringing the damn doorbell any second. Bills, that is. Um, you're going to be so excited. It is kind of Shradio Labs Sam Taggart. <laughs> I'm yeah. so freaking excited. Our first big money players network <laughs> our big host honey, yeah, guest. Yeah, that's a GGG. Will Farrell knows our that's, first and last name oh now. My. Absolutely, he does not. No, and he doesn't. Loved him and Bar- – actually, I didn't love him and Barbie, and I'll say that. Okay, I love you and everything, Will Ferrell, and I'll never be mad at anything you do because um, I love big mini players and everything they're up to. And now here's <laughs> Sam Taggart. 
Stradio Lab Sam, Sam Taggart, Taggart is in the room. They have hey, a TikTok Sam. account. They have an Instagram account. Follow those. Follow them on TikTok first and yeah, foremost. Yeah, please do. I'm um, producing amazing content once a month. You are. <laughs> um, That's a perfect amount. Yeah, you know, it's... Um, yeah, I um for my personal account, it's a lot of sort of watching it for an hour, getting annoyed, and then being like p- making the most half-assed <laughs> video you could possibly make, stitching something and being like, Mer. yeah, I'm like this is too bad, this is too bad. <laughs> it's perfect. And, you know, trying to take the pressure off. Yeah. I think that's a millennial experience. Of yeah, course. it is. I do think you're right. <laughs> do you feel forced to be on that application or I excited? Do. Forced. Yeah. Most of it I don't enjoy, and and um. And that's okay, but yeah, I feel forced. Sam, you already kind of asked off the record, but where were you when Girls came out? Uh, I was in New York City. <laughs> it was crazy. Um, no, I did. I moved here. Like I was exactly like the age of the girls when they were going through this it. This is huge. It was crazy because like it actually made me feel a little insane because it, like I was living in Greenpoint. They were living in Greenpoint. No. They went to a warehouse party in Bushwick. I just went to a warehouse party in Bushwick. That is so crazy. It, it was like, I'm freaking out. And even like, it was like, truly, I was like a dog walker. And I would like walk the dogs through the set of girls. No. And I would be like, Stop. like, it was just like, this is freaking me out. That would break my brain. Yeah, it was really weird. So I would like kind of watch it to be like, what am I going to do next week? How did it feel in terms of satire kind of blown away. happening at you? <laughs> um... I enjoyed it. I felt like it felt like funny and like poking yeah. in a, in the right ways. But people were like real mixed on it. People have are you, so mad. Have you done a rewatch since? Not of the full thing. I like pop in for certain apps. Well, how do you feel like it hits you different from like the initial like watching it when you're living it versus now? I think it's funnier now. I think I before agree. I didn't like see it as like so funny. Like they're like jokes all the time. It's all jokes. Yeah. yeah. When I first watched it, I was just like, this is how people talk. Well, I think comedy is <laughs> like that now. Yeah. I think we're like moving in a way where people just like do a story. Yeah. Because now comedy <laughs> now comedy is just sad. And so we see jokes and we're like, oh, cool. yeah, exactly. That was awesome. It's so beautiful. Comedies <laughs> really are just dramas now. Yeah. Which I don't. I think your pigtails need to be a little lower. <laughs> I, this isn't my normal look. It's because we're making fun of Marnie because she lost her mind uh-huh. last episode and wore the loosest pigtails you've ever seen. <laughs> and you're like, her waist. she's about to collapse <laughs> mentally. And that brings us to this episode where she does really. Yeah, this one really hurt. This is a huge episode for it the community is. at large. Yeah. yeah. Did you prepare your song? <laughs> oh, 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 we're kidding. There's no song. There's like, no song. There's I was no like, song. I don't know what segments you guys have planned. Um, famously unprepared for this. I uh, didn't know it was in person yesterday. So it's a beauty no, of it. We, we have to do River Tide. River Tide. River Tide. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, we got to jump into our first segment. This is Minute to Win It, where we give a this synopsis so of stressful. the episode <laughs> in just one minute. Teamwork, group work, popcorn. Okay. okay. Natalia and Adam are, and Natalia's like finally like we can fuck and he, Adam's like okay great um Lena is going a little anxious mode and she's cleaning out her eardrums or she's kind of walking through a park anxious I'm doing such a good job um <laughs> and she pokes a little hole through her ear and is freaking out f her life um and I nothing so Marnie Marnie <laughs> is oh, trying damn. to go to lunch with Charlie but Charlie forgets and then Charlie feels bad so Charlie's like come to my work party tonight and Marnie's like okay perfect and she's feeling really insecure about her career so she's like I'm gonna like make my music career happen tonight by singing a song there and then Ray and Shoshana are going through relationship troubles because Shoshana is feeling guilty about making out with the doorman. Yeah, and then um, at the party, Marnie sings a really embarrassing cover of "Stronger" by Kanye West, <laughs> and 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 then Lena goes to the hospital. Well, Hannah, but you know what I mean, goes to the hospital because she busted her ear while trying to dig in there. And mm. then um, um, and Adam comes on his girlfriend, and he, she doesn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> We've was, never done better. That was really good. This episode had less things to describe. <laughs> <laughs> I immediately have to cut this. Well, there was actually not a lot for you to say. Well, we so. didn't have much to do, so it was actually really easy because it was an easy episode. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was saying. Um, it was perfect. And Jess is not in it. Jess is on it because she's in rehab. Rehab. Girl, girl what, what girl, girl are you? you? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Uh, 
Okay, so you can do this episode or you can do the whole show at large. Yeah. Whatever you want. Whatever feels good to you. Okay. I'm going to do... I've thought about this before, and it's harder. It's, it's harder hard. than like a Sex in the City. Oh, hundred percent. And so, I'm, what are you in Sex in the City? Well, in Sex in the City, I actually do feel like I'm sort of a carry mm-hmm. um, with maybe um, Samantha Rising. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's something that fun is there. Really yeah. fun. It's like club comic is Samantha Rising. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's something in there. Yeah. Um, uh, but for the girls, girls, I really don't like. Shosh? I'm like you're random. I'm random. I'm sort of like um, I'm like not type A, but like sort of like especially when I was like in my twenties, yeah. I was very like, well, I really want to be. I really want to like you yeah. don't serve my goals, and I need to get to my goals. Yeah. Um, you're going to Tokyo to learn about marketing. Kind of. <laughs> 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 and also, I do, which I kind of appreciate about Shosh the most, is that she's always like, I'm going to find all new friends. Like, right. that's always sort of, I'm always like, what if I was just like a full new person what in if like I a year? Everything. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. always in the back you of my head. You can still do that in your 30s. Oh, even more no so. No one told me. I thought I had to give it up at some point. Because but I can continue doing this forever. Your college friends Hold become on. like your high school friends. And yeah, even exactly. then, your 20 something friends become your college friends, oh which then God. means you can then. <laughs> Then you're I like, wait, that. we were friends when we were 25? That's so long ago. It's insane that I'm clinging to you. It's time to end it. <laughs> it's time to move forward. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Wait, it's actually, actually crazy. That's actually really I scary guess, to think about. Is that because you're gay? <laughs> you know, it actually, I do think that helps. <laughs> yeah. Gay um, adolescence. Yeah. And also because people that are like are having children and, and like buying homes and wherever. The, the fuck. Yeah. Oh, you they, can like, cut down the market. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're trimming the fat. You can really like pick the people. Well, and they all, like, have, like, they can only be friends with the people that are, like, in their neighborhood or totally. at their job. But we can be friends with whoever. Aww. Whoever has an amazing new podcast. Literally. <laughs> we're digital nomads in a whole new we. way. It's like, no one's going to be. No, I, I don't have friends in my 30s. What? Don't, I don't know cry. What don't cry. Don't cry. Don't cry. I cry. It's really a certain girl. I know. I keep being like, you're crying. You're crying. <laughs> I'm just cry, crying. She cried in six months. It is true. It's so hard. If she cries a whole, you can feel it through the whole apartment. Oh, no. It's like the apartment's pulsating. <laughs> Every six months, I'm like, it's time. <laughs> wow. It's a shed. I get that. Sometimes you just need it. Yeah. And it like actually feels really good. And you're like, I get why people do this regularly. Yeah. Fact, yeah. A little bit at a time. I need like a good car ride. That really sets me free. <gasps> yeah. Yeah. We just went upstate this weekend. And and drove a lot and it really was cathartic like going through hills listening to music i was like the suburbs do make sense a yeah. little also the suburbs the fast casual restaurants they take care of them better they, they do they <laughs> clean them, oh, they really clean them all. the chipotle in like a suburb is so beautiful yeah I mean, it's like very metallic they have like fun little like <laughs> sculptures on the wall yeah Here's- people care they care. That's such a good point. <laughs> they care about I've the Chipotle. I've never thought about that. Yeah. It's wow. my favorite thing. I love visiting suburban Chipotles. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> That's my brother's whole experience. He lives in rural Illinois right now. It's like all he eats is suburban Chipotle. <laughs> yeah, some people have it all. Some people have some it all. Some people have it all. <laughs> uh, what girl are you this week? <sighs> God, it's such a hard question every time. Yeah. And it's cool because you think I would know it's coming, so I think about it a bit more before the podcast. Um, I feel like honestly, so Shoshana in this episode. Yeah. I feel very Shoshana in the sense that it's like um yeah. like yeah. avoiding the truth. Like I'll give like partial truth, but she's like, I held hands with the doorman. It's like, no, I kissed, I smuckered up with the doorman. Um it's also like the way she's like avoiding the situation and like having confrontation with Ray until like we have ultimately a big explosion. I feel like something I could do. <laughs> huh. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was really insightful. Uh, yeah. I'd actually really agree with that because whenever I can tell something is wrong, I'll be like, is something wrong? And you'll be like, no. And like pivot turn away <laughs> and then two days later you'll be like so this is what was happening i actually agree with that it's i kind of like that method yeah i think because i need to be ready to talk about it yeah and i don't want to like talk about it when i'm like mad about it of course i want to be like over it and then be like this is what was bothering exactly me. i think it's more effective can you be like level-headed about it I don't, yeah i'd rather get yelled at right away Ugh, i hate getting like, yelled let's at. get it out <laughs> <laughs> let's get it all off the floor what right kind of girl you are this week amelia what girl are you i am Mar- 
Marnie, unfortunately. Yeah, I knew that. It's wow. really sad to be Marnie in this episode, but it's like I am going through something where a lot of people are having secondhand embarrassment on my behalf. <laughs> Can I say something? What? You're Marnie in a sense anytime you go to a comedy show and you're 21 years old and they're like asked for a volunteer and your hand goes up so fast. <laughs> 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 like you're singing Wait, at a comedy show. What do you mean like, by that? You're singing at a comedy show. I'm singing you're at a comedy a show. You're having a moment. Like we saw John early live, and like really they like went through with the whole camera and every single person. Yeah, I and was like, gonna in be the in biggest it. performance for the camera. Like you have to sign this because it was like <laughs> they were gonna put it. They team. were doing like an '80s whatever thing. So uh-huh. we were like lined up and they were like cheer everyone, and I was like I'll give them a show. So I got up in the camera and I was like. <laughs> <laughs> and then some PA was like, that actually might make the cut, so we're going to need you to f- sign a consent form. Wow. And did it? And it did not make the cut. Damn. Uh... Cut to the morning it came out. We're sitting on the couch watching. We're like... <laughs> <laughs> I, no, I did nothing to him. Surely it's the post credits. Yeah. <laughs> surely it's in the credits. There's 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 BTS. <laughs> Where are the bonus That's features? That's so funny. Um, but yeah, no, I'm definitely Marnie in that like. It's I'm, okay, girl. Yeah, I, I, I want to hear about how you're Marnie. Well, Marnie in that she's like, I don't know what's happening in my career. Like, let me do something crazy. Maybe that will fix it. Yeah. You know, like, just her need to do something huge because she's comparing herself to somebody else. And she's like, well, this isn't this. He, no, no. Like, that is so my mood most days. Wow. And um, to boldly sing rap and be like, this is fun for everyone, right? Like, <laughs> I'm totally, like, making a choice that I think, like, everyone's, like, having fun with and everyone's like, no. Wow. <laughs> I mean, I'm impressed that you're able to see yourself as a Marnie. That's yeah. really self-aware. I think it's, it's brave. It's kind of a self-aware it It's kind of bold. <laughs> it's kind of scary. Yeah, like to know you're that girl. Well, I always think self-awareness is a bit of a confusing thing because it's like, okay, well, if you're aware, shouldn't you be like, well, then I'm going to stop? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, and that is a good question I should think about. It's kind of always secondhand self-aware. It's two days later. You're walking away from a situation and then you kind of come self-aware of it. Yeah. It's never in a moment. Yeah. Ah. Uh, but it's like there is something really like I love this episode because it is like Marnie is so embarrassing and it's so bad. And then her ex-boyfriend's like, you're so hot, let's fuck. And it's like she just did the worst thing a girl could ever do. And now she's getting like the reward of sex with her ex. Like she kind of does have it all. Like it goes to show you that you can be an insane girl and you can come out on top. <laughs> That's true. That's a good moral to take away. Right? <laughs> I love that they really really like show no like it's not like a mixed response to her performance everyone is like doing like over the top like (laughs) oh (laughs) the extras were giving it their all it's their time so funny it's so funny the one they did like a panoramic like around before it started Shoshana. and there's like one girl like crying on the phone because she like <gasps> didn't get a promotion or something <laughs> and then just like all uh, all the side acting was really good i have something to say on that though because it's like every time in a startup culture they always treat themselves as family so this girl's so comfortable crying around because it's her family right you know what i mean it, startups are always built around family but it's actually they're like using abusing your time and make you feel bad that's exactly what my experience was. When I lived in LA, I worked at the sketchiest like podcast influencer startup that was just like a rent- a legally renting an Airbnb on the hall and drive. Whoa. And um, one time they were throwing like a 420 weed party with all these like weed sponsors and the bus was coming up and I was trying to park my Fiat because I just got back from like shooting with a crypto guy. <laughs> Everything is fake. <laughs> Anyways, they were like, I was like, I have to move the multi camera equipment back into the garage. And they're like, well, the bus comes here. And I was like, okay, I'll back up. And I back up. I hit the bus. And they're like, you're going to have to pay for that. I started bawling. I'm like, no, I'm just a girl. Oh, no. I didn't have to pay because I cried so good. But all my co workers <laughs> had never seen me like cry because I was so a girl boss. I was head of production at this company at 23 Whoa. because that's how fake it was. <laughs> But I, they were like, Amelia, I've never seen you like this. You're usually such a girl boss. And I'm like, girls fall down sometimes too. Oh, wow. <laughs> Did you get fired the next day? They were no. like, she showed weakness. And I cannot fly. Oh, my God. I should have gotten fired. bus. <laughs> um, perfect. Is it time to lean into Lena? I think it's time to lean into Lena. 
This, this it will be huge notes. for you because you host an intellectual themed podcast. Mm-hmm. This is where we intellectually think about what Lena was thinking when she was coming to this episode. What was she trying to say? Like all the storylines where we had and we're almost to the season finale. It's like, what was she setting up here? I found this to be a rejection of expectation. Ooh. I, I remember this episode coming out and being like, this makes no sense. Like, Lena especially, her plot line of, like, just fucking up her ear and then being, like, discovering she's OCD, like, in this moment, I was like, this is not what this show is about. <laughs> I wish you guys could see what his eye does say. <laughs> We're going to have to do a Zoom. A free stream Zoom. <laughs> so I was watching the episode and I said... <laughs> <laughs> this is not what this episode is about. It's not what the show is you about. You were, what, 23 years young? Yeah. And I was sort of like, okay. And then from then on, I think my expectations were always changed. Where it was sort of like, the show is just sort of going to be what she wants when she wants. Mm. And I actually mm. feel like that's what this episode uh, demonstrates for me. You're so wow. much smarter than us. You were like, this is where she's like, and I can break the damn rules. <laughs> she's like, and, and don't expect anything from me ever. I'm going to do what I want. That's so powerful. That's really And to smart. recognize that in real time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. And I mean, I, and I was in Greenpoint saying, you know what? If she can break all the rules, so, so can, can I. I. <laughs> Look at you now. <laughs> so crazy now. Um. Yeah. No, this episode was very like, it can be random, guys. And in fact, like, we're not going to talk about the Jessa thing. And the Shoshana, <laughs> the Shoshana and Rhea thing is going to be like, who cares? <laughs> And the Charlie Marty thing is going to be like fun. Yeah. And then. Well, everyone's kind of at their lowest in this episode. Something terrible is happening to everyone. There's so much internal conflict. Like Adam is drinking again because he's triggered by Lena. And we have Lena or Hannah. We keep. I know it's hard. It's hard. <laughs> but, They're different. I mean, girls. Hannah, for, I mean, we're already, she's already at her lowest, but she gets a splinter and then she punctures her ear. And Shashan is dealing with this lie that she's holding on to. And Marnie's just trying to hold on to any semblance of like, like accomplishment she has. So she like overperforms in front of Charlie. It, it's sad to watch. It's a sad ep. It is it's fun a, when Shoshana is like, Ray, help Marnie lay her track. <laughs> <laughs> Like she's like, Ray, do you know Garage Band? He's like, I love the Macintosh programs. I know, and then, Macintosh arts. Macintosh <laughs> arts. Uh and she's like, please help me lay tracks. Like just a girl being like, please help me lay tracks, like earnestly. It's like so powerful. I love when it's a girlfriend genius. asks a guy, her her guy friend, her boyfriend to do something. There's something so powerful <laughs> in the tonal language of that. Yeah. Especially for a, a friend. Like when it's not even yeah, for yeah, yourself. Exactly. Yeah. It's genius. It's genius. And Ray is like, I guess I have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Gets up from the couch. Well, it's kind of Ray's fault that Marnie's singing to begin with. So he's like, it is he's that's true. Yeah. I'm trying to remember, like, obviously, like, covering a rap song is, like, I'd say, like, millennial cringe. But I was like, was it at the time? Like, I know that it was, like, supposed to be bad. But I'm right. like, there was also, like, people were doing that sincerely then, too. In a way that what was, was happening confusing. Then? Was that, like, post Glee? That was... I, I think Glee might have still been on the air. Yeah, it had six seasons. So it was yeah. still like, go anywhere. Rachel, like, Leah, Leah Michelle was doing it. <laughs> yeah. So she was <laughs> she was giving us a base level permission. Yeah, it was in the culture to yeah. do so. Oh, wow. But not in a good way. Like, Oh, you're totally right. Muse- raps became music or, like, full-on songs in this era. Well, and it was also that, like... Pitch Perfect. Like, had, had it come right, out? Pitch exactly. Perfect. Had Anna Kendrick rapped yet? Hey, Siri, <sighs> what year did Pitch Perfect come out? I think it had. I'm going to guess it had. I think it was okay, 2014. I'm in airplane mode. It was 2014. It was devastating. Fuck. It's okay. You Ugh. can just add it here. It was 2014 <laughs> we, because I remember cut, watching okay, it in we'll grade record it both ways and then you cut it. <laughs> this is like when I had to voice Whoa. over Rita Wilson's name. <laughs> <laughs> but there was also like people weren't as aware like people that was sort of the, the like you know spiritual gangster like yeah right. spiritual gangster like, my spirit animal like obama yeah. era had made everybody be like everything's fixed and we're free yeah yeah yeah, yeah. like biggie and coffee yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh sad but oh beautiful. God, i love that you brought a spiritual gangster <laughs> That is the perfect thing for this podcast. We need spiritual gangster shirts. I don't know if we can say it. But it's ironic. It's ironic. Yeah. (laughs) 
How much can irony reclaim? It's hard to tell. It's so hard to know now more than ever. Yeah. <laughs> but it could be the edgiest thing ever. You could be the new punk rock. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fashion's principal. So. I got love 10 it. years. What else happened in this episode? There's so much. Um, well, okay. Can we break down the Adam Natalia of it all? Adam, big thing That's happens in this big... episode. He breaks his sobriety. Yeah. Because of the a run-in. Coke and ginger. So I don't think we mentioned <laughs> this in the synopsis. So if you haven't just seen the episode, um, Hannah is walking home from the doctor after getting like her eardrum like figured out. And she's just in like a big t-shirt looking really down. Yep, no pants, big t-shirt. Yeah. She walks past Adam <laughs> who's feeling anxious at Natalia's best friend, Amy Schumer. The Amy Schumer drop was shocking. I wasn't ready. I was not ready. <laughs> but I'm pleased. Um, but yeah, so Natalia and Adam get serious, right? And then Natalia invites Adam to Amy Schumer's bachelorette party or whatever engagement party engagement, engagement party. party and adam's feeling really anxious and stressed so he goes outside to get some air and that's when he runs into lena and they do a check-in and isn't adam just like i'm still in love with her is that what's happening in his eyes i i think that was sort of what was happening but she also was being insane in like the one minute like to she didn't say one normal thing but immediately punching down at herself the like like what was the sentence? It the was something like, oh, when I was a kid. Yeah. Or it's because Adam always famously calls uh, Hannah a kid. And he's like, kid, I haven't heard that in a while. Oh, yeah. It's good to hear that. She's like, I just went into the ER because I stuck this in really, this Q-tip in my ear. And he's like, be wor- be careful, kid. Yeah. It was. And then, yeah, I, I think he was down. like, I'm in love with her. But it was. But like, but why? I hate myself. <laughs> right. And he was like so confused by his own emotions and yeah. how much they overtook him that he was like, I need to numb this out. I'm going to get a Jack and Ginger and dance with Natalia <laughs> from Life Unexpected. Does anybody watch that show? I don't know what this no, is. I've never heard of that. <laughs> Every episode Natalia's in, I'm going to ask the guests if they've seen it until someone's seen it. Um it was a really good show. It's just a very because we they both independently talk about each other um, before this moment when they have separated. Like Lena's still like in therapy where she's like, I can't tell if Adam's still the best person or the worst person I've ever met. And before then, I can't really see him. And Adam's like, I'm still in love with Hannah. Right. And then we kind of see them crossing paths again here. And it's that really like that tension that's built up. And Adam's already going through this tumultuous time after at being in an engagement party where like he this guy's like. I can't believe we're not to sports. And he's like, I love sports. Or it's like, he doesn't know what the hell is going on. He's so out of his depth. He just like wants to build a boat to go across a river. He really is yeah. down bad. And he's feeling so crazy. He's so crazy right now. He's so out of his element. And then for Lena to stroll into his life, this manic and like counting eight times down the road. It's like, yeah, he's going to want to drink a ginger Coke. That's Coke. so true. <laughs> he really, um, it was like, also, the sex scene up at the end, it was like, oh, so he just misses, like, a freak. Like, yeah. yeah like, that Lena was, like, nasty perv, and he could yeah. do whatever to her. Yeah. And <laughs> when when he makes her crawl, and she's like, no. <laughs> she's immediately like, this isn't going to She's never happy for a second. No, she's also doing, like, Shoshana talk as she was <laughs> crawling. I was like, this is so Shoshana coded. <laughs> so, when he has the, po- the post not clarity, too, where he's like, you're going to break up with Sorry. Her. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> you, do you think I'm a freak now? So, so this is done now? <laughs> and she's like, can you comfort me even a little? I'm feeling really terrible. Her trying to get her dress off is so funny. Not on the dress, not on the dress. And she's pulling off. And, oh, my God. Perfect timing, too. She I was did good. not like that. I don't think I like that at all. I'm like, go off, girl. That girl really is from the beginning. Like, she knows what she wants. Like, she's like, I'm ready to have sex now. And then, like, they lay down and she's like, and this is how I want you to do it to me. And then, like, this episode, he's like, it's my turn to take a swing at <laughs> at the game. <laughs> Here's what I like. And she's like, immediately, no, and I have to never speak to you again. <laughs> and Amy Schumer's about to yell at you in a damn coffee shop. Ooh. Ooh. Spoilers. Spoiler. <laughs> Sorry, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not exact. Well, yeah. <laughs> Soon or? No, we have a few. We have a bit before. Okay, sorry. Because well, what Adam thing ends up ghosting her. Right. Because oh, he, he can't take her. Yeah, he yeah, can't yeah. take the pressure. Yeah, yeah. Damn. Ray and Shoshana now. How do we feel? They always confused me. I'm yeah. like, just, 
I'm like glad they're having sex or whatever, but like that seems like that's kind of where it ends. Right. Yeah, I think Ray is like trying to hold on to like some semblance of like youth, and he really yeah. idolizes that in Shoshana, who is like the most youthful spirit in the show we have. And he he doesn't want. He's so Peter Pan, like he doesn't really know what to do with his life. Like he has all the talents. Like he has a is great. Is that what Peter Pan's about? not wanting to grow up yeah oh Looks, yeah right yeah. i don't want yeah, to turn past is. 14 <laughs> <laughs> that is the story you're absolutely right. yeah um he really idolizes like the youth it's it's kind of like the creepy thing where like men always date these younger women but don't want to be part of their lives yeah it's gross or don't want to be confronted with the fact that they are young yeah that's true like it's like he wants to keep her in this bubble and she wants to like see the world and i feel like she, she got into the relationship so and she's so type a young. and he's so and now like, she's trying yeah. to like soak up her last year of college or whatever and i forgot he, that she was in college yeah. in this moment and he's like oh i don't care about that and she's like well i care about it yeah. And so he's seeing her kind of grow up and he's afraid that like if she knows too much, she'll realize how big of a loser he is and leave him. Right? He also is like, I feel like throughout the show, he's always like almost the good, like you're like, oh, he's the good guy. He's the one that would, mm. it would be like fun to be friends with and is right. like nice and caring. And then it's like, oh, he's also the perv. Like yeah. <laughs> that's such a confusing It's so dynamic. confusing. I did a poll on our like Spotify thing. Like, do you think Ray is good or bad? And it was 50-50. Like people are like, oh, he's so sweet. Or they're like, he's literally breaking the law. Those are the same numbers as we asked, should we make a threads account? <laughs> the same exact numbers. <laughs> wow. Uh, oh. Two family. We're, we have the Capulets and the... <laughs> me trying to make a Shakespeare reference. I don't know anything. You almost were there. The You're Capulets so and the Hill. Montagues. Montagues. Yeah. Yes. Our listeners are Montagues. Half Capulets. They're at war. And we're just like, whatever you want. No, exactly. No, exactly. So true. It's amazing that you have a diverse fan base. Yeah. Right. <laughs> that's so funny. That's, like, that's a Spotify analytics. <laughs> Anything else you want to hit on for leaning into Lena? I, I mean, we didn't even talk about Marnie and Charlie here. Oh my god! And that's a real Where moment. Where are we even the god? <sighs> <laughs> Charlie is a weird one as well. He has like such a weird arc. Charlie oh. is a weird one, and I don't know why. I don't understand. Like the him fucking Marnie at the end. I am like, but why? I really like right. is it like you're so mad at her you're so annoyed it's like an angry he's thing so in love with her or I it's think like... it's just like him realizing like he's like why do I care about her well, he has power <laughs> now and I think yeah. it's like he wanted to prove himself to Marnie because he felt like he wasn't really holding like Marnie he wasn't good enough for Marnie he always felt like in the relationship and he's always trying to make up for that because he always sees Marnie as this really idealized girl as we always right. describe about this show even when she's doing poorly here like he still sees her and that viewpoint and now they like has a successful app and is having a party and it's honor because of the what's it called the Mios or whatever. Yeah, I didn't twenty twenty thousand monthly oh, users. The monthly oh yeah, you average, everyone says it wrong. Shoshana's, average monthly users. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but now he's yeah, like, congrats on the Amos. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Amos exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but he's reclaiming his power, it feels like, in some way. Or at least in my viewpoint. Like, no, he, totally. Because the yeah. last time was at the dinner party when he tried to kiss her on the roof. And she was like, no. Yeah, he wants to last laugh. And now he's like, well, now that I have this power, I can finally get this girl to fuck me. Ooh. Wow. Did you see where they kiss, though? So no. They run into a closet. And then outside the closet, in big neon letters, it says, forbidden. <laughs> <laughs> Because <laughs> the app. Well, it's, yeah, it's because the app, but it's so Lest funny. Lest we forget, the app is inspired off of Marnie. What is the app again? The app is called Forbidden, and it basically makes it so you can't call your ex, and if you do, you have to pay ten dollars. <laughs> and he's like, after we broke up, I made this app. Wow. And then he got seed funding, and now he's like living. Well, with it's his so best funny friend. to go into the place that says forbidden, based off of Marty, and completely break all your own rules. Like he made this app, and he completely he's like it doesn't work. Yeah, he needs this a new own app. app. Doesn't even work. <laughs> yeah, wait, that's it's actually so sick. That's actually really important. The girl you're trying to avoid actually is now singing at your party for your twenty thousand emus. If the shareholders find out about this, you're done. done. Literally, there <laughs> could be an entire movie about this. That's Succession. Yeah, that's the new Succession. <laughs> succession season seven. I mean, we just quickly talk about Hannah freaking about. It. We didn't even talk about the publishing scene 
where she like is it, it oh my gets god john cameron mitchell is so funny so is funny. he the publisher in shrill too yeah the he's one the yelling publisher. at amy exactly. oh, he's yeah, the publisher yeah, yeah. there too it's perfect wow i love this scene because at first it's like it's it's like we're really starting to show there um she's like trying to like explain why her book is so terrible he doesn't read it because he like can't even handle it the assistant walks in he's like three chives it's like there's two of them there and it's like i don't think <laughs> Hannah's even the assistant drink with that. the newsboy cap and he's like do you work out and he's like no yeah and he's, he's like, like stop, stop it <laughs> i love that <laughs> he's so funny as like a bitch he is so funny as a bitch yeah yeah the like she's like well i had sex with a teen yeah <laughs> and he was like, like write that write that that's perfect but she's like well i don't want to get in trouble and he's like no this is good and where's that's something genius. i get arrested before yeah and he's like and if you're not having sex make it up and if can you make turn it into a whole novel <laughs> it's so beautiful and she's like i'm writing about friendship <laughs> yeah it's like who at hbo was she specifically like calling out with that character <laughs> You know? She's like, I'm oh, trying to talk really about the good. four girls' friendships, and they're like, more fucking. Can you have cum in this episode? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't seen any cum, and yet everyone's fucking. Where's the cum? <laughs> Literally. <laughs> I just love the whole Q-tip thing. Yeah. She, like, punctures her. It's kind of like so poetic. She's trying to hear her own voice, and then she hurts it. Huh. It is. It like, that. I don't genius. think it's so. <laughs> Nothing in girls so far has been that, like, this is a mental illness. Yeah. So much as like, this girl is really showing like mystery diagnosis, OCD, like what is happening? It's TLC. Right. And we go back to the therapy. Like we, there's a point made in the first season, Honey Pluto was like, there's no therapy in a show. It's like, even when they go to the therapist, the therapist is so unhelpful and talks about their own book deal. <laughs> it's like no one's willing to help Lena. And she's like, She's trying to get help from the doctor. The doctor's like, I literally can't do that for you. Girl, get your Glock. It's, it's rapid, rapid fire, fire time. time. Oh, my God. This is a rapid <laughs> fire question and answer. Uh, uh, you got to just think on your feet. Do you, do you have an improv background? Oh, yeah. Classically trained. It's time to bring it out. <laughs> Fuck. Okay. Ready, set, go. Why is Marnie mad at you? Because I'm uh, busy podcasting instead of getting drinks. <laughs> are you a schoolgirl or are you getting schooled, girl? I'm getting a schooled girl. What's your favorite utensil? It's fork. Would you rather live in a nice building facing an ugly building or an ugly building facing a nice building? Mm-hmm. Ugly building facing a nice building. Mm-hmm. Are you oh. are you a voice of your generation or at least a voice of a generation? A voice of a generation. If you had one sentence to say to Amy Schumer, what would it be? Are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> what doesn't kill you and makes you stronger? A day of hard work. <laughs> <laughs> what did you find on Adam's floor on all fours? Oh, um, his grandfather's ashes. <laughs> that's Whoa, a really just good loosely answer. Spread. Yeah, that was a really good answer. And that's that segment. <laughs> that was so scary. I was so scared. Re- I'm sorry. Well, no, no, no. I think fear is really important. Um, I but think it it's, ignites the soul. It, that's. Uh, Put that on a mug. Yeah, that, <laughs> not I have work, then I have dinner thing. Then I, no one knows this quote, but I was like, it's part of the canon. <laughs> it's cool for them to put that quote out of all of them on a mug, and then for you to buy that mug. Or did you 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 chose the quote? I chose the mug, but uh, somebody already designed this. Okay, it's like somebody made this sentence gradient colored it, uploaded it to Redbubble to sell. Like that's wow. that is cool. I wonder how much money they've made. Thousands. I think they get 10% of all bought merch. <laughs> so not much. So maybe 80, 90 bucks. <laughs> that's huge. Yeah. That's, that's pretty not, good merch. It's not terrible. Yeah, that's amazing. Whoa. Well, and there's no risk. They don't have to I know. It's house a really the good They don't have goods. to do the distribution. Or print yeah. anything. I mean, they're getting off easy. It literally. Hey, Redbubble. That's an ad. Yeah, please <laughs> save your thoughts. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be a big roll. <laughs> I think we're walking to our last segment now. Are you ready? Yeah. Then versus now. Okay. Then so be now. Then be Uh-oh. now. We're kind of comparing today's kind of tropes versus yesterday's kind of tropes. Uh huh. Tropes. Ideas. <laughs> are, are they gonna? Are the viewers gonna attack you again for saying a word weird? They always will. <laughs> 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 They're one thing they are is consistent. <laughs> 
<laughs> this is actually huge because then be now i think you're one of the first people oh who, this is perfect you, for you then you were in brooklyn That's so you, you actually have firsthand accounts which are the most um, I can reliable bring accounts some, i'll bring up some stuff that just triggered a memory and then we can go from there okay i love that i think a perfect one to start off with is q-tips Q-tips are the same. Well, actually, <laughs> I, personally, it, this episode did change my relationship with Q-tips. Right. Forever, yeah. Forever. Nothing bigger than an elbow in there. Yeah, and and I always, uh, now people like pretend it's common knowledge to be like, well, you don't actually clean your ear with a Q-tip. And it's like, yes, you do. I have to say something. What? When I was three years old, I was a, four years old, I was a Q-tip model. Um, what? Is that true? <laughs> yeah. And I can pull up <laughs> <What>? pictures. <laughs> I'll well we'll post it on a podcast. Um, but my part my photo shoot was that I had fallen off a bike and we were using Q tips to clean the cut. Mm-hmm. Right. And then the other people in the ad, the other children were painters, they were um in playtime, but no one was really cleaning their ears. So I think the Q tip companies always kind of know you can't really clean your ears with the product. They don't want you to. No. Legally legally sorry i can't believe you were a child star yeah there's a lot of little things i don't tell you <laughs> <laughs> that was a I... lifetime ago <laughs> a lifetime ago Hopefully i don't know the person I'm in my left <laughs> um so q-tips have never been about the ears but it's like what are they for yeah that's Painting, sort of where i stand cuts i've seen people do them on cuts but yeah, yeah, yeah. i think applying they're still an pretty ear shaped they're you know pretty what I mean? ear friendly <laughs> yeah i think the outside of your ear but let's well, go in here. a little. You're on a little, of course. It is like <laughs> it is like you're 10 years old with a Q-tip, and you're like, I make my own boundaries, I guess. Yeah, I'm gonna figure this out. Yeah. It's time to get in there. How did you feel during the Q-tip scene? Um, we were threw up on this end. Oh, I was it almost as satisfying. I'm almost like I ho- I want her to get in there. Oh. Whoa, yeah. that's, that's a cool that reading. <laughs> You want the air out. I'm very pro Q-tip in this episode <laughs> proving. Charlie, who was on like two episodes ago, said after this episode, they stopped watching the show entirely. This was a moment that felt like, oh, is the show Jumping Shark? Like, right. Is this what does show that mean? Flop? It it's, uh, means like the show's going off the rails, but it's a reference Jumping to Happy shark. Days because they had the Fonz water ski over a shark. Like <sighs> ramp over a shark, so they call I it jumping shark. I can't shark. Even imagine Happy what days. that could be. It was like a show. I don't even know what era it was, but it. I only saw it on like Nick at Night or whatever. I'm really oh liking God. this. So someone jumped over a shark and it was a bad thing. Yeah, because it was like late oh. in the series and they were like losing ideas. They were oh, having trouble. Oh, like, I see. Oh. It's not a Jaws reference. No, no, it wasn't a Jaws I thought it reference. Maybe it was something to do with like what happens during Shark Week episodes. Yeah, oh, that could be a good tie-in. That's a sponsorship. <laughs> nope, it's uh, jumping over a shark from the Fonz. But okay, you just watched this episode and said she's being random. Did that inspire you in- years ago to keep going? To double down or to tap out a little bit and be pulled back in. I I mean, I kept watching pretty regularly, but like it was, it did make me distrust her at least. Ooh. Whoa. Yeah. Uh, That's actually like huge because it's like the show is about you, right? <laughs> Correct. Like you're like huh. in Greenpoint. It's like no other show would have more to do with you than this show. Yeah. And then she talks about OCD for one episode and you're like, I have to rethink everything. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the show is good. Yeah, it's not good. Um, huh. Yeah. And it was just like, it made me question whether she there was a grand plan at all or if it was just like noodles no. at the wall and she's just like. I think yeah. there is a grand plan, but I think also when you're 24, it's almost near impossible. Yeah. I, yeah. I do think she did an amazing job for what she has. Yeah. And being 24 is she what she was has. She was like, when talking about season two, she's here. like, well, season one, I've been thinking of my whole life. And season two, I've been thinking of for six months. <laughs> <laughs> so there is that layer. No, yeah. exactly. Q-tips, then me now. The iPod, I thought was so of the time. Oh, sure, like, sure. It was the wide Make one, like the iPod Adam, classic, Mickey. where it's like not the little guy, yeah. the fat thing. And the DJ's like, of course I can put that on. <laughs> Which also was like the better, like that meant you were like actually cared about music. Yeah. If you had the big one. I actually, um, <laughs> I never had it. I've been wearing it as an accessory and I feel like it's a perfect time to pull it oh, out. Oh, that's yeah. so slay. Pull out that it's iPod an, shuffle. It's an iPod shuffle. 
That's supposed to be bringing up. Did you have the classic? I had the classic, yeah. Brag. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, I had the classic. They're so fun. I, I'll wear this like in my hair, just like Where a little did you, brooch. Did you just have that? Where did you get yeah, this? Yeah, you blocked that out. But it's my phone number. I had to bring this to summer camp with me. Wow. Um, For and we had it like morning runs? I don't really know because they wouldn't let me leave the cabin on my own or really – there's no worries. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you're in prison. <laughs> what was summer camp to you? <laughs> a lot of talking. <laughs> um, the classic, the iPod classic. What else? Shuffle. What else was really 2012? Well, I was even wondering. If I guess I wanted, carry to, on. I wanted to ask you guys about oh, sorry. this. Yeah. In my mind, that idea of a tech startup. Like, I know tech startups still exist, but the idea that, like, one day you have one, the next day you're rich, I feel like is more of that it era is than it of is time. of this era. Oh, more millennial than Gen Z. Yeah. Right. Because we're having a boom with Silicon Valley. Yeah. And we're kind of, and our generation is so, it's so online where it's, uh, people are getting rich, but it's not in the same. And I don't think actually as many people were getting as rich as was portrayed. Yeah. I think it was around the same time that, like, now that the like influencer market's like oh, oversaturated, that's... but in like 2012, it was like the big YouTube people that were just like blowing up in such a proportion that's like they were making millions and ha- they were like, I'm 15 and I'm in my room and no one's ever done this before and this landscape barely exists. Is the same thing with that, like the apps, like the landscape didn't exist. It was moving so quick and people were like, well, we've got to get in now and sp- invest in these apps because there's not a lot yet. There was also like a race to the bottom, like where it was like can we make a simpler app can we make an even dumber yeah. app and so somewhere where it's like no you have to pay ten dollars if you call your ex is like that would be real it, like remember there was like you press the button to order a pizza like that Literally. was like a slice apps, or like, like there was yeah. an entire app that was honestly, just I'm like i'm thinking of startups it's slice is one i was thinking of so it's crazy for you to bring that up and they used to be so that what was like the slice? thing is because everyone thought like twitter was stupid and then it was like and now it's the most popular yeah now it's like X. news media at the X. highest <laughs> 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 the one app that was just like chugging a beer. Oh my god! Do you remember chugging that? A beer, shooting a gun. Love that. Love that. They're so fun. And now people are like, we get it. Doodle dumb. We don't need yeah, those nobody anymore. Nobody wants to download an app when you go to like a new fitness place and they're like, we have an app. It's like, can you not? Yeah, don't. I'm happy with the card. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can I just talk to you? And they're like, no. <laughs> Absolutely not. So, oh, I was gonna say if this sh- episode was made today, the sex with Natalia would be way scarier. Oh yeah. I felt like they were really, like, trying to be they're, measured about, like, it's not assault. Yeah. It's right. just weird. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and they're trying to be edgy, but, like, it's like, okay, well, what really happens? Yeah. Like, <laughs> that was confusing. Yeah. It, it would be, yeah, it would be much, much weirder. He came so quick. It took, like, yeah. three yeah. seconds. I'm impressed. Yeah. And he was drinking. Yeah. That's kind of crazy. <laughs> he was really horny. He's so horny. <laughs> <laughs> he i don't i'm wishing to tell you the absolute best yeah that's you, a girl like i know you know what i mean yeah, like yeah, we yeah. know that girl yeah and it's like i feel bad that she was in that scenario because she didn't like it i feel like she was living in brooklyn though i guess maybe it makes sense i don't know what 2012 brooklyn was she living in 2012 brooklyn or you feel like she's in manhattan i think she would live in like 2012 williamsburg okay perfect yeah okay scratch it <laughs> scratch it scratch it <laughs> yeah Oh my god, what the else? editor, Hannah, did your hymen grow back? I just found out <laughs> two weeks ago that the hymen does grow back. Oh, sure. Yeah, I had did no idea. Did you know this? Yeah, I've heard this. From who? I don't know. How did you know before I did? <laughs> this isn't fair. Oh, we were talking about this I'm, earlier, but it's squirting urine. And I didn't know the podcast. In girl, was and it's no. No, but someone no, told but me it was. No, but there's sometimes urine in it. Is that what it is? Yeah. How Someone's does it, trying to explain how does this it to get me. to the second hole? <laughs> <laughs> Honey. Uh, it's not up to us. <laughs> I liked Ray being like, your voice is beautiful, like Katy Perry. Yeah. <laughs> it is like, because Katy Perry, it's like, she's a pop star, but she's not a, she's yeah, it's not, not like, an amazing oh, singer. The voice, Katy Perry. It's like Adele. Yeah. It's There's no so Adele. many other people that you yeah. would say. <laughs> I was talking to someone last night about Katy Perry's impact on pop. And apparently, it's not significant. What? And it's I disagree. Well, that's not true at all. Charlie Flynn. 
Yeah, you know him. Yeah, I do know him. He's being insane. He was like, Gaga did so much more. And I'm like, that doesn't take away the fact that Katie did a lot, they too. They both did a lot. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> he's like, Gaga changed pop forever. And I'm like, and Katie moved a mountain. Katie also moved a mountain with California Girl. No, Charlie's being reactionary and right wing. You're Ooh. being, yeah. First time in this podcast that. that they called right wing. That's exciting. Write that down. Come for his ass. <laughs> it really I don't know, this isn't for, I mean, especially if you listen to all the music, it's like these, a lot of like one, uh, what's like a one hit wonder artist, female artist in 2014 are featured in this episode. Um, Carly Rae Jepsen was in it? No. Yeah. Well, she's not one hit wonder. We can't yeah, talk about that. She's a million What are girl. the other hits? Oh God. Oh my God. Good day. <laughs> and that's one of impact on pop music. Jesus. Lock me up. Charlie. Lock me up. This brings all those things. My pigtails get lower. <laughs> it's that girl who's that song who's like, Gucci Louie. Yeah, but she's a her other song that did well. I cannot remember. Oh, I forgot her name. I love it. Well, any closing thoughts on girls or this episode or your life overall? Uh, this please. is kind of a whatever you want to end the pot on. No, I have. This has been incredible. It's always amazing to revisit HBO's Girls, and I don't know what else. Would you like to be <laughs> part of Lena's future projects? This is your time to kind of put that in. Yeah, here. yeah. I actually did have an idea that I right the camera. Um, I had an idea that I told to um, someone that works for Lena actually. <gasps> That and th he was like totally write that up, and I never did. But <laughs> because it was like you don't know, think where they're like totally, but it's not totally. We don't. Maybe know. it was but totally. We're excited to find out. <laughs> yeah, you guys are having, yeah. have an amazing journey. <laughs> I can't wait to be. If you're in LA now, just wait. <laughs> um, but it, it, the idea was that, that um, and I actually still, Lena, I want you to do this. But it's a it's. Uh, obviously, it's a period piece, right? Um, and it's about a girl living in Brooklyn in 2014, mm -hmm. and um, HBO's Girls comes out, and sh so she's watching her <gasps> life happen uh, in real time, and she starts to go kind of crazy, and is like, kind. Of, I think it's a like she like kind of has a psychotic break and it's needs to like hunt, yeah hunt down like <gasps> Lena Dunham basically. Wait, oh my god, I have seed yeah, funding for you. <laughs> Take it, make it. Wait, I want to watch that. That's literally kind it's of our needed. story. Yeah. Guys, yeah. thank you so much for joining us. I'm sorry, Woo! the episode is slightly late, but it's going to be out so, so quick. We'll be back next week with the season finale. Sam, thank like, you so much for being on. Thank you so much for being on, Sam. This is so fun. This is, this this is, is so, so huge. fun. Yeah. Did you believe me? It was fun. I, just, I didn't know if it came out believable. <laughs> no, there was a, it was a mocking tone to that. Yeah. Wait, I, I said this thing. Are you second guessing that? Because I meant it. <laughs> no, it was so fun. So fun. <laughs> um, <laughs> listen to Straight A Lab if you're not already. It's literally the best. They're so smart. And if you care about anything that's gay, you would care about saying Well, anything, anything that's straight. Anything. straight yeah, as well. Either way, I guess. It's kind of both. Yeah. The way it's like a, it's gay, but it's straight is so marrying marrying <laughs> sexuality like it's like it's Kinsey. It's, it's Kinsey. <laughs> it's Kinsey. It's giving Kinsey. It's, yeah. You're saving Kinsey. You're making his name known. He's alive again. Yeah, he's reborn. <laughs> well, we're still here. Same Sam Tiger. Um, guys, well, bye. 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 <laughs>